Okay, um, next up we're going to have Michael Janson who's going to be talking about um, tracing and containers with LTTNG. So, uh, hi, can everyone hear me all right? Yeah? Okay, uh, so I'm here to talk to you about LTTNG and containers. And I want to say LTTNG stands for the Linux Trace Toolkit Next Generation, which uh, is a name we don't really like, but uh, it's it's been like that uh, since the beginning and it's stuck with us, so pro tip, choose your project name wisely. Um, so my name is Michael Janson. I work at Efficios, which is the company that does, mo that does most of the development work behind LTTNG. Uh, I am, my background is not in development, but mostly in system administration, so I do mostly all the CI work, the porting to different architectures, build system, and, and so on. And since last year, I started developing new features, integrating uh, container support into uh, the LTTNG toolkit. So just a quick overview of uh, what I'm going to cover today. So this is a follow-up to last year's talk. Uh, if you were here last year, I apologize, because there's uh, going to be a lot of the same material covered, because last year was, uh, uh, I was explaining a proof of concept, but now we're in the implementation phase. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll cover why, well first, what's LTTNG for people that are aware of what it is. Uh, what do we mean by supporting containers in, the, in LTTNG and our progress since last year talk and I'll go over the, the features we have now and the features we're planning to implement this year. So uh, what's LTTNG? It's, uh, it's a suite of tracing tools. So we have two tracers, one kernel base, which is a kernel modules you insert in a, in a Linux kernel, and the other one is a user space tracer, which is a, a set of libraries which you link into your project and then add a trace point in them. So how can you describe what is a tracer for, to start? Um, it could be described as a fast, non-blocking, structured, binary logging framework. So basically, logging, but uh, faster and more flexible. Um, so the kernel tracer is used to get low-level information about your system. So you, could get, you can get uh, syscalls and, and their parameters, the scheduling event, AOI, IO events. So it gives you a really uh, in-depth view of what's happening inside your kernel. And then the user space tracer will be used to well, applications have to be modified to use the, 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 uh, the user space tracer, so uh, trace points have to be added to them. But afterwards, if your application is instrumented, then the two tracers can be used together to correlate information with, uh, with the kernel information. Uh, so all our tools use a common trace format, which is called the CDF. Uh, so it's what's produced by both tracers and then what's consumed by the tooling and the analysis scripts and so on. Uh, the CTF format is also, it's a spec, and a spec format that's also used by other projects like uh, GDB for their uh, trace, uh, tracing functions too. Um, the tooling is called LTTNG tools, so it's a common uh, tooling that, that's used to, that you use to control both the kernel tracer and the user space tracer with the same kind of commands and, and primitives. Uh, and then we have a command line trace reader, which is basically a command line tool that's used to read the binary tracers, the tra binary traces, and convert them to a human readable uh, text format. And also could be used to convert between different binary trace formats and so on. And we also have multiple graphical trace readers, which are UIs that uh, gives you a graphical view of the content of traces. So there's one that's called uh, Trace Compass, and then and there's also uh, LTTNG Scope. So why would you want to use LTTNG? Uh, because it gives you a combined view of kernel and user space. And also, it's a very low overhead uh, lugging and tracing solution. So it can be used on production systems that have actual uh, production workloads uh, well, uh, without having uh, much of a, well, there's always a small impact, but the impact is usually low enough to be used on production systems. So 
the difference of a logging framework where if you would set your logging framework to be a, a verbose debug output would usually have a very big impact on, uh, on the running system. Uh, it also can be uh, enabled, disabled, and reconfigured at runtime. So if you have a running system and something happens, instead of having to reconfigure the daemon to output more information and then restart the service, with LPTNG, you can just start a tracing session in the background, attach it to your running system, and then get the information you need to troubleshoot the, the problem without having to restart or reconfigure the system. It also provides you flexible storage of traces. So traces can be uh, just basically uh, simply written to the local disk, but they can also be streamed over the network or they can be stored in uh, memory ring buffers and only hit the disk on certain events when you really need the data, but otherwise just spin in memory and have a very low uh, impact on your system. And now, um, in the context of LTTNG, uh, what is a container? Well, not only in the context, but what is a container and how can we observe it with LTTNG? So, uh, the problem we faced was that from a, a kernel perspective, um, there is no single concept of a container. So you cannot like read a data structure that, in the kernel that would list all the existing kernel, uh, all the, the existing containers and their names and so on. So we have to find uh, other solutions to get this information. And also there's multiple container runtimes like uh, LXD, Rocket, Docker, and many others that all use the same kind of facilities in the kernel, but all do it kind of their own way. And if we want to be as generic as possible and support all the use cases of all your users, we have to support all those different uh, container runtimes. So what we came up with is that all, all the containers uh, are all based on the same uh, kernel subsystem, so basically the namespace C groups and also other isolation and security subsystems, depending on uh, on, uh, on the runtime. So, and now, what does it mean to support uh, containers in LTTNG? So we can divide this task in two main uh, objectives. The first one is that the traces we produce, the data you you extract from your system with LTTNG needs to be, needs to contain information that uh, related to containers so you can basically uh, like filter uh, events based on, let's say I want to know all the syscalls that are, all the right syscalls that are coming from this container instead of having the list of all syscalls that are done by all the containers on the system. And the other main task would be to uh, adjust our tooling that which is currently uh, which currently assumes like a monolithic system which it was designed before containers existed so adjust our tooling and our deployment strategies so we can it can, it's easier to use LTTNG in container systems so the the main task we tackled last year since the, the my talk last year was the trace content so uh, the features uh, are developed. They're not, they haven't, it, they haven't uh, been released yet, but they are queued for version 2.12 of LTTNG, which should be released around April uh, of this year. So the main features are, um, to, so we added to the kernel tracer uh, a state dump of the namespaces, so that will uh, help you to get uh, the state of the system at tracing startup. Also, we added context to classify and filter events uh, with namespaces. And we already add but we, uh, the syscall events that will be used to track uh, namespace changes. So I'll, I'll go in, uh, over more details on each of those features. And also, uh, and the same kind of support was also added to the user space tracer, but only the namespace context was added because from user space, you, there's the, the, the view you have from a container is much more limited than from the, the kernel side. And what is still missing is having some more uh, 
events that come directly from the container runtimes to uh, get a view of the life cycle of the containers and some more metadata from the containers. Uh, so for the specific features, first was the context. So what is an entity gen L well, is an LTT and G context. It's, uh, it's basically a metadata field, field that you add to a trace event. So if you have an event that says basically uh, an event from the kernel, for example, which is a, uh, uh, a syscall, for example, well, you want you can add information to this to this like logging statement. You would add metadata. So for uh, we current the current the context we currently have are like process ID, threads ID, process name. So you could basically uh, enable those contexts on your tracing session, and each of your event would be tagged with the proper information. It's useful for when you manually read traces uh, text traces, but it's also very useful for filtering. So if you want, for example, to uh, only get the syscalls that come from a specific PID, well, you could add a, a, the PID context and then add a filter that would say only uh, read the events that come from this PID. In the context of containers, uh, so we added context for each of the namespace types that are uh, in the kernel. So. And this enable, enables us to do filtering on, on the, of events per container. And on the user space side, uh, it all, uh, we can have the same context, so basically have the same container ID to the user space events, and then it will uh, allow you to correlate events between a kernel trace and a user space trace, that would, and you would be able to know they come from the same container. So here's an example of a text representation of a syscall event, the get time of the syscall event. And you can see that the, uh, we added a, uh, namespaces. You can see a namespace, uh, sorry, the namespace for the, the PID NS namespace context in green. So basically it gives you an ID for this PID NS. Um, inside the, 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 the kernel, there's no, con there's no concept of uh, Con uh, containers, as I said before, but there's only namespaces, and namespaces don't have names, or they're, they can only be referred to by the inode number of the link in the proc file system, which they are exposed to user space. So that's the only unique ID we found that we could use to identify uh, uh, namespaces. Um, and so you can see in this example that uh, the event is tagged with the context uh, PIDNS, so you, we know from which container it comes. And we ca you can also see that uh, since this is a PIDNS, then the, the PID would be different inside the container and outside of it. So you can see in the fields TID and VTID, the view in orange from the host and the view inside the container. So in this example, this is uh, a Docker container running Redis server, so the the, 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 the init process is Redis server, and you can see that its PID is one inside the container, but on the host, it's uh, 11,000 something. And so the same thing, uh, we, well, we did the same thing for the user space uh, tracer context, so you can see the same kind of, of values and the same kind of uh, filters. And so if you wanted, so, and here is an, is an example of the commands you would have to run to uh, enable a tracing session of all the syscall events are, that are coming from a specific Docker container on your host. We also have what we call the, the tracker feature, which is basically uh, a simpler filtering system that's uh, much faster. And we already have an implementation for PIDs, so basically to trace specific PIDs on the system without having to use the filtering rules. And we're planning to add the same, uh, the, the same feed, well, adding namespace support to this tracker feature so you can uh, basically trace all the events that come from a container on the, inside the kernel uh, without, with, uh, uh, more, much more easily. And the other feature which we worked on is the state dump. So what is, what's, an, what's a state dump in LTTNG terminology is when you start tracing, there are certain events 
that are emitted, which gives you a view of the current uh, state of the system. So for example, a list of all the PIDs, a list of all the OpenFDs, a list of all the block device, and so on. And so we added to this information to the, we added to the pr uh, process uh, information uh, the, the namespace context. So now you can have, uh, you can f uh, have uh, an initial state of your containers when you start tracing and you can use this to, when you do analysis uh, afterwards to uh, uh, build an initial state of the, the system. And so we added this information to all the same, uh, the same namespaces. And also the PID and user namespace are hierarchical. So they, there's a hierarchy. You can, have, you can have containers and containers and containers. So this is, the information is also provided for modeling. And you can see the events that are generated when uh, you start tracing. And you can see that they now contain uh, the, the ID number of the, for example, the uh, uh, process, PID namespace. And so this, uh, the second uh, big task we have would be to make our uh, tooling aware of containers because currently all the tooling in LTTNG expect a single, to be running on a single system with, the, with a, a single view of the, the mounts, the like, no ID mapping, so a single view of what our user IDs, what PIDs are, but when you're in a containerized system, depending on where you're running or where, from where you're observing a process, it can have an, a PID that's different from if you observe it in the host or in the container. So that's all things that we have to adjust in our, we have to adjust those assumptions in our tooling. And also, uh, if we want to uh, give some easier solution for deploying a uh, LTTNG in container system. We have to review the security, how we do security, because right now it's pretty simple. It's based on Unix IDs and uh, uh, file system permissions and so on, on on Unix socket. So if we don't, if we do like bind mounts to expose a uh, Unix socket from uh, a daemon running into the, uh, in the host on inside containers, then we have a whole problem of like, uh, what's uh, what's a UID and who, who, can, who can control tracing? And so, well, I'll go over that. So currently, the support the support deployment is pretty simple: is that you have the kernel tracer inside the host, and you have your uh, one instance of a user space tracer inside of each container. But what we're where we want to go is to have a single instance of the tracer in both user space and kernel inside the host and then have access, and then give access to these resources through the containers, so you wouldn't have to do a full installation of LTTNG inside of each container, and you could control the whole system, the system as a whole instead of having, uh, seeing the containers as each uh, whole system. And uh, so that's the, the vision that, that decoupled the container wire tooling vision we have for, for the future. And we really want to know what, uh, what are your needs and your use case? So if you use containers and you use tracing, or if you don't use tracing right now, but it's something that you're interested in, we really want to uh, know about what are your use cases, what's, what's your current pain points, and how we can make things better for you to, uh, to use tracing. So you can uh, contact us on IRC, uh, Twitter, and we also have a development and user mailing list. So does anyone have uh, questions? That's going to make things easy. Oh, all right. Hold on a second. Nah. Yeah, that's not going to make it to the camera. Well, about things that we are facing right now, for example, with, when you have like several containers with an orchestrator like Kubernetes, uh, being able to trace something running in a pod, in a node, in a cluster, it's, it's a hard problem right now. So uh, I'm sorry, I really can't hear you, Rel. <laughs> uh, tracing in Kubernetes. So you have like a Kubernetes cluster with several instances of a running application running several nodes. Having a, a tool to be able to trace these this applications without uh, like going inside the, the, the pod or the container or going to the node and then tracing from the node. Okay, so if you have a cluster yeah. with, with containers and you want to trace a specific application yeah, inside the specific containers, yeah. It's a specific container. Well, uh, yeah, we, we don't have a solution for, for, for yeah, that no, right that's now, in the In the line of yeah. problems that we are facing, the last okay. question, so do you think 
that's one of the problems right now. Okay. Like, like pricing on, on clusters of containers, not yeah, single yeah. containers. Yeah, I know that. Well, what a lot of uh, people that are using containers right now that are talking to us, that uh, it's that there's a yeah. Well, there's a shift in before systems were static and they were uh, you, you would configure manually each of them, but right now they're spawning containers and we would need to have some way of auto configuration, uh, auto configuring tracing into the containers and having remote uh, administration, but that's, that's something we're interested in, in looking at, but that's, we don't have it right now. All right, out of time. Thank you. Thanks.